On today's video, we want to share with you some of the little steps we are taking towards self-sufficiency. Since 1998, I have been on a journey uh, towards self-sufficiency. I, back in 1998, I had four small children and I did live in the Metroplex in Dallas. And I thought that it was very important that I was able to do the things or have the things available for my children and my family that would, um, that could keep us alive. And since that time, I have developed a lot of skills and I want to share some of those with you today. I think it's very important at, in this day and time that we all do all we can to supply everything we need to live so we're not beholden to another man. One thing you can do that will help you be more self-sufficient is you can grow crops and fruits that, and vegetables that uh, do well in a ge geographic location. Things that our ancestors or the pioneers grew in your area, that's what we did and that's what we do. Now, Mr. Roofer, every little bit of green, as you can see, it's really dry here. He picks uh, grass for the dairy cows and, you know, just anything we can do to feed our dairy cows. Uh, we do because it's, you know we're in another drought. So another important skill that I've honed um, is making sourdough. I make sourdough about every other day. Every weekend I make hamburger buns for whoever's coming over after church. And um, you know that's something I don't even need to uh, think about. I've just done it so long and we do have a recipe on our blog though. Another skill that I've been working on for the last 20 years is making cheese. Um, and I use clabber to culture our milk. Culture, I, I culture everything with kefir or clabber. I kind of maybe 10 years ago quit mail ordering anything because I, if I can't produce it in my farm, I'm really striving to produce everything that I need here or just learning to like with um, what I can grow here or raise. There is a scripture in the Bible that gives us some insight to how important it is that we do all we can to take care of ourselves. It is 1 Timothy 4, 10 through 12. For this end we toil and strive because we have our hope set on the living God who is the savior of all people. It's especially of those who believe. And to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one.
Uh, we had our pickup for Azure this week. We really don't use the grocery store. We do get Azure every few months because we just keep a few staples, um, but we do mainly eat in season and we don't eat a very, we eat a very simple diet actually. A lot of what we have, but we do, um, you know, things like coconut oil and popcorn. Um, we order in bulk and olive oil, but um, we pretty much just keep, you know, keep it simple. And we have a, a grass-fed beef business, so we have a lot of beef. And I think that is one way that people can be more self-sufficient is to, you know, just kind of eat what grows well or what you have access to locally. And I've been doing this for about five years and you know what, your taste buds change and you really get um, used to, you know, eating. Well, I'd say we do about 80% of eating in season and then 20%, I don't worry about it because Stress is bad for you also. <laughs> I have been making a, from Clabber, a thermophilic culture that I can make yogurt or cheeses. Um, I have a video on that. So, you know, it's just another step closer. I have been trying to make all my clothes, not my jeans, but uh, for the last year, you know, most of my clothes, and practicing sewing. And I just finished this jumpsuit, and it's really comfortable, made out of linen. And another skill, and we actually have the black cauldron pot, and we have the ringer, the whole thing, and but it, we have a burn ban right now, and so. Maybe this fall, if it rains, I'll show you how to do laundry the old fashioned way. But um, for now we have a wash tub and I will put my whites out in the sun and leave them out in the sun in the afternoon because I use, I do not use any kind of bleach of any kind. And this really will help brighten your whites. And then I will hang them on the clothesline and they will smell so good and it will whiten them. The most important resource on your farmstead is water. Water security is everything. We take this is probably the most important thing for us. We are adding a four ring cement tower on our, for our main home. Uh, it will be fed by a windmill that we put in a few years ago. Gravity flow, uh, we have a tank house with a two ring tower on it now for our home. We have a three ring for rainwater collection. And over at our farmstead home, which is off grid, we have a four ring tower that is fed by a, another new windmill that's gravity flow. That home, actually, you can even flush toilets. Um, you have really great water pressure. So we're looking forward to another source to add in our long, you know, list, I guess, of trying to have water security for our family and our animals. Also, um, it is so dry here. We normally do not have to feed this time of year, but we had to get a shipment of organic alfalfa um, from Coyote Creek. So Mr. Roofer, the truck pulls up on the road in front of our house and he has to unload it. But it is, um, you know, it's necessary. We're grass fed. So our cows don't, you know, we don't really give them grain, so. 
I have been making every night clabber ice cream. <laughs> we just absolutely love it. It is creamy and I've been adding uh, fruit. I've, this is, these are blackberries from our farm. I'm gonna, I made five different types, but this, I wanted to make, you know, show you the one that we produced on our farm. So I put about a cup of pureed blackberries. Um, some of the other flavors I made, um, I made peach because we produce peaches. I made blueberries and strawberry, but I ordered those from Azure. And then I'm making a cherry Garcia with cherries and chocolate and a little almond extract. But I've been making this for my um, Cuisinart ice cream maker. Um, it holds about five cups, so I've been using about three cups of clabber and anywhere from two tablespoons to a fourth a cup of some kind of sweetener and about a cup of fruit. So the first thing I do is before I use my clabber, my fresh clabber is I put a tablespoon in a quart jar and this, I do this about 6 p.m. every evening because I want my clabber to um, culture all night, go 12 to 14 hours, because when I do my cheese making, it's usually in the morning and I wanna use my clabber for cheese making first. And then what I don't use, I make into clabber ice cream just about every night. So I put the clabber in with the pureed fruit and I don't like it completely smooth. I like a little bit where you can tell, see the fruit, but um, then I put it in my Cuisinart ice cream, um, I guess, bowl. And then my freezer just freezes it automatically. I take it and I put it back in the freezer and let it get a little bit harder before I serve it. Now we, this has, you know, is very healthy. It's kind of like, I guess, kind of like frozen yogurt, but absolutely no work other than putting a tablespoon of clabber in an empty jar and covering it with raw milk. So it's just absolutely delicious and it's very beautiful. Not only is our clabber ice cream delicious, it is so beautiful. We have blueberry, blackberry, peach, strawberry, and cherries Garcia. I hope you'll try this recipe. It is so delicious, and I know that your family will enjoy it. As always, thank you for watching. From our Texas farmstead to you, have a blessed day, and we will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.